Don't fight everything you don't like. Don't live bitter over the people that did you wrong, the door that closed, the company that pushed you out. May not have been fair. Yes, it was painful, but God wouldn't have allowed it if it was going to stop your purpose. There are things that we're not going to understand all along the way. You have to trust that God knows what he's doing, that he's working out his plan for your life. His plan is bigger. His plan is greater. There are levels you can't reach without going through a dry season or without opposition, things that are unfair. That's all leading you to a super bloom, to greatness, to promotion, to influence, things better than you've imagined. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment or you're not going to make it. Anybody can dream it, but you'll never see it until you're willing to be committed to it. Do you have anything that you're dreaming that you're willing to be committed to enough to see it happen? You need a why. Why do you need a why? Because some days you're going to look at that alarm clock and you're going to say, I don't want to get up. But that why is going to say, I'll push yourself. Get up. Your mama needs you. Your daddy needs you. Your children need you. Get up. Your why is going to push you when you can't push yourself. When you want to quit and give up, your why is going to give you that edge you need, that advantage you need, that lift that you need to get to the next level. Your why. Listen to what I'm saying, people. You are the future. I do not want you to start thinking as small as your bank account. Be obedient to the visions, the ideas. Move on them. Out of sight, out of mind. It's grind season. It's hustle season. I need to awaken the beast inside of you. If you make it to the end of this video again, I want you to write, The world is an empty canvas waiting on new thoughts to think. And it's on us to create those thoughts. It is your responsibility to be obedient to God's visions. How dare you have God to send you a vision and a thought and an idea or show up and reveal these things and ideas to you in your dream. It, it can be you writing a book. It can be you with all of your arts and crafts and designs. It can be you with sports. What are your visions and ideas that God has sent you? What is it? What's taking you so long to move on it? Put your money together. Budget your money. Make the move. Make the move. Just do it. And guess what? If you hit a wall, get your ass back up and keep going. I've made it this far from hearing way more no's than I've heard yeses. But I'm not afraid of the word no. Write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, that means take a long time, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. Listen to me, that's real. If you don't think it's real, I dare you to try it. Write everything you want on a piece of paper, everything. Use your wildest imagination. If you can think it, you can achieve it. Write it on a piece of paper. Read it every morning and every night. Come back here one year from today and see how much of that stuff then came true. You have to write it. If it's not written, you reduce your chances greatly of it ever occurring. Nobody's going to come knocking at your door with opportunities. You got to create them. Out of sight, out of mind. We talked about this before. Out of sight, out of mind. No one will ever have you in mind for anything unless you have yourself in mind for it. Get on people's radars. That's it got to interact, socialize, get around the right people. Out of sight, out of mind, people. I can't tell y'all enough. What is the plan? Any man with no plan shall perish. What is the idea? What is the vision? What is it? What's happening? What's going on in your mind that the world needs to experience? One underneath the other. Just let your dreams run free here. Not what you think you can get, but what you want. If everything fell into place and you could have whatever you wanted the next 10 years, what would that be? Little things, major things, insignificant things, doesn't matter. Just make the list. I got to tell y'all something. The real reality is this. When you decide what you want to do for your life and your career, when God sends you a vision, a bold vision and confirmation around that book you were supposed to write. Anything. 
It's going to be your family and friends and loved ones to be the first ones to try and talk you out of greatness. Because why? They were never sent that vision. They were never sent that idea. They were never sent that concept. As a matter of fact, if you try and explain it, they're still not going to get it. Because you see the invisible. You see what's not there. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. You have to be able to see what's not there in order to pull off the impossible. Be clear in your mind in what you intend to achieve. Know what you are going to do. That doesn't seem like too much to ask. But how often do we see people going through their lives without knowing what they are trying to do, without having any intent, without having a clear mission? I'm talking on an individual level. As a person, people go through their lives without knowing what it is they want to do, what they want to accomplish. Know what your mission is. Know what your intent as the commander of your life. Know what your intent is and then fight with everything you've got to win. Three major parts of personal development. Number one is physical part. Part of success is physical. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. One of the first things to go to work on with intensive effort, and that's your own good health, because a lot of things come from that. You know, the future possibilities could be greatly, 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 greatly diminished by being lazy in producing maximum health. If you'll take care of that as a support system, you can't believe what else is possible. You can't believe what the mind can think of. You can't believe your imagination and your faith and your ability to say, hey, I'll go to work and produce the muscle to do the deal. Why? I'm healthy. I'm vigorous. I'm vital. I'm not out of breath. But sometimes, you know, when all these ideas and stuff comes and, you know, you're too, a little bit too weak to even attempt, you say, oh, I'm not sure I can do that. The doubts sometimes are more physical than they are mental. You haven't got the vitality to believe it's possible. But if you've got the vitality and the strength and you've got the health to do it, I'm telling you, Ideas seem to love to be invested in healthy people that have got the ability and the ambition to pull it off. They got the health to do it. They got the strength to do it. So why not start with the health and see if your own vitality would inspire you to more imagination? Because now when you imagine, you can pull it off. But if you can't pull it off, you know, why imagine? The imagination says, why to go to work and spin all these goals and stuff when the body isn't ready to produce? So start with physical. It's very important. Now here's some good ideas. There's scripture that says this, treat your body like a temple. Excellent phrase. A temple meaning something you take extremely good care of. Treat your body like a temple, not a wood shoe. Here's why, the body and the mind work together. The body and the physical and the health is a support system for the mental that can dream, that can think, that can ponder, that can wonder, that can design, that can believe, that can have the spirit and all that's possible in terms of emotional content. But now, since the mind and the body work together, you gotta to take care of the body as a support system. One wise man said, sometimes the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. See, that's a sad combination, a willing spirit and a weak body, sad. You wake up in the morning, right? The mind says, let's go get them. The body says, I can't even get out of bed. So have a talk with yourself and say, this is the last time I'm gonna be out of breath. This is the last time I will lack the vitality to pull off my dreams. Because sure, the dream factory will shut down if you haven't got the vitality and the energy and the health to pull it off. So, start taking care. Now here's the key to be conscious of self, but not self-conscious. You just got to take care of it. You don't have to be a fanatic. It doesn't take eight hours a day pushing weights to have relative good health. Just do the simple stuff, the exercise and the nutrition and the health and the, just do the stuff, you know, for normal pulling off with vitality, the dreams that you want, just a simple little plan will do. Now also part of the physical is the outside as well as the inside. Interesting phrase written, it says, God looks on the inside, people look on the outside. So you got to take care of both, the inside for God and the outside for people. What's the old phrase? You never have a second chance to make a first impression. 
So the outside appearance is also valuable as well as the inside figure and vitality. Somebody says, well, people shouldn't judge you by your appearance. Let me give you a clue. They do. You can't bypass that. Now, of course, when people get to know you, they'll judge you by more than just how you appear. But physical, outside, inside. Here's what's good advice. Make sure the outside is an excellent reflection of the user. Take care of both. So first, in personal development on these three parts is physical. Here's the second, spiritual. I am a believer that humans are a special creation. I don't ask other people to adopt my belief, but I, I simply am a... The humans are, are unique among all life forms. We're affected by how we feel, attitude. This is the emotional part. We need the intellectual part to set sail. So as the winds blow, we can still get where we want to go. Redefine, keep strengthening our psychological and philosophical guidance system. But now we're also affected by the emotions. That's the power. Four things to consider on attitude and how you feel. Here's number one. It's how you feel about the past. Past experience, even past losses, past failures, as well as successes. To review it and go back over it, see where you went wrong, correct that, invest that now in the future. Don't live in the past. And don't carry the past around like a burden, but simply use your past as one of your mentors to help refine mistakes, make some changes that you can invest now in the future. Here's the second attitude. It's how you feel about the future. We look back for experience, but number two, we look forward for inspiration. Take some time and decide what you want. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do the next 10 years, 20 years? How about the people you want to meet, the cities you want to visit? experiences you'd like to have over this next period of time. Here's the next key. Write it all down. Building a life is like building a house. You wouldn't start building the house until you had it finished. So I'm asking you not to be casual anymore. Start designing the future for yourself, for your family, for your business. Okay, decide what you want. So from the past we get experience, from the future we get excitement. Now here's the next advice. Put everything on your list of goals. Little things, insignificant to someone else, but important to you. So set goals, set the goals that'll turn you on, goals that'll get you excited. Put everything on your list. Now, here's the next attitude. It's very important how you feel about everybody. If you want to be a leader extraordinaire, here's what you learn. Each of us need all of us. One person doesn't make an economy. One person doesn't make a symphony orchestra. Each of us need all of us and all of us need each of us. Each gift is important as we bring it to the table, as we bring it to the community. Now here's the last one on attitude. It's how you feel about yourself. Nothing more powerful than self-confidence to start multiplying your income by two, by three, by five, by 10. It comes from self-esteem. Doing the things you know you should do, and at the end of this day, your self-esteem is soaring and high. Three key words, remember these words? Here they are, study, practice, and teach. If you are a believer in whatever religion or whatever spiritual part of your program. These are three excellent words. Study, practice, teach. Don't neglect your studies on your own spirituality, whatever its origin, whatever your beliefs. Then practice. Put it into practice so that, number one, you become a good role model, first for your children. Then teach. Pass it on. You've got to pass it on to the next generation and the next generation. What if the next generation gets a little weaker and the next generation gets a little weaker? Now the family foundation is starting to be weakened, which now weakens the nation because the nation is built up of strong family foundations. Now here's the third part. First is physical, second is spiritual, third is mental. Some key phrases on the mental part. First, the mind must be nourished. Food for thought. Bread for the head. Yes, you need a slice of toast in the morning, right, for your body, but you need a slice of cassette you put in the car system and listen and listen, let something feed your mind. Here's what I teach in one of the other seminars on the mind, and that is stand guard at the door of your mind. Don't just listen to anything and everything. Make sure that you're, you're your own best filter of what goes into your mental factory and spins out the fabric of your life and future. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Spend time. Be a selective listener. But you got to have a good diet, a good mental diet. When you walk into a home and walk into the pantry of the kitchen, you take a look. What's in there? 
this, this family is either going to be healthy or it isn't going to be healthy. And a lot depends on what's in the cupboard, what you bring home, right, from the grocery store that you feast on for the body. Now here's what's important, a proper menu for the mind to make sure that it's got a wide range of nourishment because the mind needs the full education, the education of the dangers of life as well as the possibilities of life. Life consists of really two major things. One is avoiding the dangers and taking advantage of the opportunities. That's what life is all about, avoiding the dangers and taking advantage of the opportunities. Now, by education, you've got to be able to see both where somebody points out to you, these are the dangers, these are the possibilities. And if you keep refining your ability to see the dangers, to avoid as many as possible, and to see as many opportunities as possible and to maximize those as you go and refine and go produce and refine, now that starts to develop the foundation for what we call a good life, a productive life, a fulfilled life. And we need this mental input so that you'll have mental food to feast on long after the lights are out and we've left the premises. Now, we also need mental exercise. We talked about debate earlier. That's good mental exercise. Is it or isn't it? Here's what's important to debate with yourself, to look at both sides of the issue. You must be a student of tragedy as well as triumph. You must be a student of ill as well as good. Ideas. Learning to debate with yourself what's good, what's bad, what's good for you, what isn't good for you. Keep your mind vigorous. Study evil as well as good. You need a good library. And in this library, you need all kinds of diversity. You need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. Gandhi to show you how high and lofty someone's ambitions that are noble can go. And the other one to show you how despicable and low someone can sink in terms of pure evil embodied in you. Don't be afraid of the debate. Don't be afraid of the health debate. Don't be afraid of the religious debate, the spiritual debate. Don't be afraid of something you believe in to be challenged. Because that's where the vigor and the, and the flourishing of something is. It, it is, survives the debate. If it survives the debate, it's a pretty good idea. Okay mental exercises. So feed the mind, debate, exercise, a continual diet. You can't go too long in between the classes and the schools and the seminars and the sermons where things are being taught of value. Here's what else is important. You got to go to everything, everything you can afford. Have a good plan, weekly plan, monthly plan to go to a variety of things, go to a variety of things, go to a variety of things. And don't miss. Don't miss the chance. Even if you're involved in a certain company and they say, we're going to have a training class. You say, I've been to one of those. I'm asking, you got to go again and you got to go again. You can't get it all the first time. When they call a little training class, make sure you're there. Here's why. Some of them are going to be life changing. And you don't know which experience is going to be life changing. You can't pick the one. You just got to go, 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 go. One is life changing. You go again, you go again, you go again. Another one is life changing. For the people that were there, somebody that you met, something that you heard, and that one was just perfect. The atmosphere was right, the crowd was right, and everything was right, and you'll never be the same again. And you don't know which one that's going to be. That's why you've got to pursue. Go often, have a good plan for the search of knowledge and ideas that can inspire to the best of your potential. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write this. The world is an empty canvas waiting on new thoughts to think. And it's on us, creative visionaries. It's on us to create those thoughts. You pop up with the vision and the idea and everybody monkey see, monkey do. They all fall in line. They want to do exactly what you did. What is that vision? What is that idea that you're sitting on? What is that dream that showed up to you and only you? You have to have everything you want written. If you do not have it written down, your chances of it happening is reduced drastically because it's a principle of success.